what do we do as far as self-care uh, with all the messages coming from us from ubiquitous communication devices everything goes on facebook everything's on youtube there's more data than we could ever comprehend how do we take care of ourselves emotionally and spiritually right wow. now I, you know i wish i could bottle whatever the real answer was and sell it uh, but I, I to be serious I, I really think that we have to learn s- s- to some coping skills ourselves in the in the midst of all of this conflict and and challenges and various challenges that we have in our beliefs and the way we behave and act and talk and all of those things i think we have to really go through that discovery process where um we're we're trying to find out a little bit more about ourselves and there's lots of ways to do that so i I really think some of the basic counseling um, values or something to keep in mind i mentioned earlier that the idea of empathy of looking at it from a different point of view and not being so entrenched in your own beliefs that you're always right because that's a mental disorder if you go too far on that continuum called narcissism (laughs) right and and, uh, you're the center of attention and you have all the great and wonderful answers and you, you know how to do everything when that's not true for any of us so uh, right yeah. you can't you can't go too far but but to open that door to be open to learning i, I love the way virginia satir talked about it years ago he said you know it's like changing hats you, you take off your judgment hat for just a minute and put on a hat that is open to learning and you really can't learn while you're judging and, I, and that stuck with me for, for quite a while. And, I, and the idea that we learn these coping skills and use empathy, use the idea of authenticity. Who, be yourself. Be who you are. You've heard this, this kind of advice and, uh, along the way. Everybody's heard it. But, but the idea is really pretty sound that you, you, uh, you, you examine your beliefs and then you treat people like you want to be treated. That's something that goes back... 5,000 years or so. Uh, doing, Golden rule. Doing to others, of course. And uh, so, but that is, there's some real humanity and truth That's in that. That's right. That's right. And, and, I, and I, we should all value that. And uh, the idea of expertise and gaining expertise and being open to new information is quite a challenge. My, my, my friend Dan says that when you have this emotional disruption or something happens to you, uh, that you didn't expect and it shocks you a little bit and he says that is the moment to sort of lean in and so the psychotherapy side of it would be that you absorb that shock if you will whatever that is that hits you that's uncomfortable that's disruptive to you you allow that to happen but you don't need to be reactive and respond immediately that's sort of the uh, quick uh, and probably not so helpful response. He says that what you do is you feel that shock and you give yourself time to take a breath. You give yourself time to sort of, wait, I don't have to answer exactly in this moment. Let me take a deep breath here and just just get a little distance from that emotional moment and then respond and use empathy and, and congruence and authenticity in the way that you understand what the other per- where the other person is coming from. And if you practice that in these situations, giving yourself space, it's just really allowing yourself to take a time, a short a moment time out yeah. before you respond. And I don't think people do that. We're too reactive and we're trying to hold on to these ideas and ideologies and not be challenged and will not accept any differences in what we believe. So I think that's one of the first ideas and coping uh, mechanisms uh, that we need to, to kind of put into place. In other words, um, and I remember it from uh, my kids were, boys were young and they'd come in and they'd want to have something immediately. Everybody's doing it in the neighborhood. Yeah. Why can't we go do it? Yeah. You know? And they wanted an answer immediately. And I said, wait, let me think about this. Let me get more information and I'll get back to it. Uh, that, that didn't always work. They love that <laughs> answer, <laughs> but they? they? Yeah. <laughs> I, I tried anyway. Uh, so so it, it is that little bit of a gap in that, in that reactivity because I think people are, are highly on edge now. They're, they're like the PTSD client who is 
who's triggered by an yeah. event. And, yeah. and maybe I once said to people, and I sort of believed in this idea that we're all dysthymic in a way, and that's, a, that's just a mental health term to talk about sort of a low-level depression that is everywhere uh, 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 in our society. And I, I kind of held on to that. No, nobody's challenging me too much on that. But but I think in this way, it, it is that sort of a low-level PTSD. Uh, yeah. Uh, that traumatic experience that has happened uh, through all of this information that we are now consuming and coming into our world. And that that has led us to be finger on the trigger, uh, reactive in lots of ways. Having said that, I think that we have to have a response to that and we have to be okay with ourselves. And so you, you've, you've, you've talked about uh, and asked a lot of good questions here and I, I don't know if I've answered any of them, but I, I, but I like the idea that we have to find within ourselves um, the ability to rise to the challenge. And the way we begin to do that is figure out what we really believe in and what's important to us and how we want to be treated. And then we put that into play. We start acting. So I had a client once who said, I just don't have any friends. How do I get, how do I make friends? Yeah, I said, well, first of all, you become a friend. Mm-hmm. And it took a little while to kind of process that, but the idea is if, if you like people smiling at you, for example, smile at them. Smile at them first. Open the door. Be courteous. Just the simple things that, and somebody made that, there was a book. The, 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 <laughs> yeah. the things we learned in kindergarten. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, but, but be kind and, and, um, and courteous. Uh, and, 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 it, and I think, um, again, I used the, uh, the reference from Alfred Adler. He says uh, that, that life takes courage. Yeah, yeah. And and to to examine your life and then life figure takes out courage. Yeah, yeah and yeah. figure out what is important for you and then actually act in that way. Not let that be just a conversation or something you thought of for a while and then you go go but put it into play in your life and start acting like that. And you'll find a lot of friends and you you'll you'll have better communication with people when you just come from that that framework. I think that's so important in mental health. And I, and I, I hope that um, people will kind of put that into practice and, and live it. Try it out. Give it a trial run and uh, smile. And uh, I, keep, I, I don't know why I had this flash in my mind, but uh, one of our colleagues used to, who you know, was a principal at the school, and he, he'd get out of his office and walk around school, and he'd see a piece of paper on the, on the floor, and he'd pick it up and put it in the trash can. Mm-hmm. He says, when you see something that needs to be done, do it. Um, yeah. Don't wait for something to happen before you move and start that action. So I, I broaden that out a little bit to say, yeah, take, be courageous. Use the principles and the values that you think are important for yourself and what you believe for humanity in a general and broader sense. Put that into play. Um, and you'll you'll see the results from that. So I could go on and on, but I think that's that my attempt to answer that question. <laughs>